Hi and welcome back to our course. Today we are going to start on module 2. I am sure you remember that we talked about course objective and programming paradigms in our last lecture and understood function programming a little bit. Then we were able to differentiate function programming and object oriented programming models. We will take a look on why we should choose Scala to code with and then we will start and get our hands dirty by writing some Scala code in Scala Ripple. Why do wait then? Let's begin our journey by taking a look at module objectives. In this module, we will start with why to use Scala for our applications. There are more reasons to that and we will talk about them later. We will go ahead and know about Scala's offering to us, the developers. You know, because of Scala's popularity and multiple paradigm features, it's being used in many other web frameworks and toolkits, even front-end frameworks like Scala.js. We will discuss about that later. And then finally, we will start by doing a bit of Scala code in Scala REPL. I am waiting for that. We will set up environment for Scala programming by installing IDE for Scala. We will, uh, we will use IntelliJ IDEA for that. We will learn about Scala's basic data types. If you are coming from a Java background, this won't be much of an effort for you. Scala is statically typed and our next topic will be type inference. We will discuss about control structures in Scala, if and else if and pattern matching and all those constructs. Then we will talk about looping constructs in Scala. Finally, at the end of this module, we will discuss functions. Scala is also a functional language and there's more to functions than uh, any other object oriented language. We will discuss about anonymous functions and procedures. So you see there's a lot coming in this module. We will be covering all of them. I'm sure that you're going to get along with me on this journey. So let's start with our very first topic. Why Scala? We have talked about Scala's capabilities to write robust and concurrent and scalable applications. You have already seen some of its capabilities like it supports immutability and uh, referential transparency. But there is more to Scala. By saying more, I mean it. Scala is concise. It's compatible, high level language, multi paradigm and easier for parallelism. So let's discuss them one by one. First, Scala is concise. I would say anyone who has some programming experience with Scala can explain that to you. The comfort this language provides to not only programmers but also developers who are constructing libraries. Programmers have reported reductions in number of lines up to a factor of 10 compared to Java. Scala has concise syntax. There are no semicolons mandatory and that's less noisy syntax to write. Much of the boilerplate code has been removed. It makes it easy to write libraries. And as I mentioned, programmers are able to reduce the number of lines. And fewer number of lines not only means less typing, but also less efforts at reading and understanding programs. It means fewer defects. You can understand this by taking a look at the underlying code snippet. This is written in Java. See, we have a class named Avengers. We have two private attributes, Avenger name and Avengers character. Then we have constructor uh, named public Avengers, taking two parameters, Avenger name and Avenger character, and then we are initializing them. This whole code can be written in Scala in just one line. Say, class Avengers, Avenger name, and then Avenger character. That's it. That's how we define. All the boilerplate code exists at the backend. Scala compiler will generate that for you. So you don't have to worry about that. That's the conciseness of Scala. I think you have some idea about Scala's conciseness now. How a lot of needless code has been removed, achieving the same result. Scala's type inference is also a contributor to its conciseness. We don't have to repeat type information again and again and thus it can be left out. See, well Avenger and we are creating an instance of Avengers with two parameters. It's understood that well type is going to be Avengers and hence it was left out in Scala. Same can be done for other primitive types such as integer, float or other classes. 
in java you have to explicitly write the same thing again and again like avengers avenger is equal to new avengers you can see that it's not good if you know about java's reflection property you may already have an idea about how type inference can be a big relief for us different aspects of library classes can be separated out in traits and uh, then it can be mixed in flexible ways and uh, we call it mixins in scala it makes development easier if you're not getting it don't worry we will talk about it when we'll discuss about scala traits those are like in interfaces in java if you know java one more example of scala's conciseness is case classes which is equivalent to java's pojo plain old java object and if you are wondering what a pojo is then you can think of it as a simple class with some properties for example or avengers class which has only two attributes avenger name and avenger character can be called a pojo pattern matching makes a lot of control structure needs easier and you will be using pattern matching a lot while programming with scala i would say you can see that uh, using case keyword we are trying to match avengers or x men and that's easy for controlling uh, working with pojos and all those things scala is compatible you know scala is a jvm language and if you don't have any idea about what is jvm then for simplicity here's how you are going to understand jvm jvm is called java virtual machine which converts your java programs to byte code so that machine can understand and perform operations with your code simple isn't it and welcome scala on jvm scala is a language which runs on jvm and compiles to jvm bytecode so you won't be seeing much difference between compiled java or scala code scala is designed to interoperate with java seamlessly and you can access all java methods java's fields inherited from java classes implement java's interfaces and everything will work smoothly indeed scala is heavily reusing java's types such as integer and uh, strings etc etc we are heavily using in scala you will feel good when you get to know that scala is not only reusing java's types but also dresses them up to make them nicer and richful scala strings supports methods like to int to float which as you can assume converts strings to its counterpart this is not possible in java and possible here because of a beautiful concept named implicit conversions scala is high level i always believe that important systems may need complex code and for that we need manageable constructs a simple example of what i'm trying to convey is strings in java are low level entities that can be stepped through character in a loop scala treats the same strings as high level entities and uh, can be queried with predicates and if you don't have any idea about what a predicate is let me tell you that a predicate is a function with a boolean result type which checks some logic or condition and then respond true or false scala's functional programming style also eliminates aliasing problem encountered in imperative programming aliasing happens when multiple variables refer to same object this gives rise to questions like does changing a variable r dot x also affects s dot x immutable data on the other hand can be shared freely and this difference is significant when we write concurrent programs so you can see this example where we are trying to reassign an already defined value named x and compilers is not letting us do that that's how aliasing is not a problem where we have immutability concept means in scala scala is statically typed a bit advanced to understand for beginners but believe me it will be helpful if you understand the difference between a dynamic and statically typed language scala's static typing system is very versatile a lot of information as to program's behavior can be encoded in types allowing the compiler to guarantee a certain level of correctness this is particularly useful for code parts that are rarely used in statically typed languages type checking is done at compile time program execution can be made more efficient by omitting runtime type checks and enabling other optimizations there are some disadvantages though uh, with statically typed checking 
like it may reject programs that are well behaved at runtime but uh, can be determined to be well typed at compile time in a statically typed language any bug that can be caught by compiler will be caught at compile time before the program has even started running by the way statically typed object oriented languages have often been criticized for being needlessly verbose and uh, indeed they are java have you seen why would you write again and again some construct like avenger class avenger reference variable is equal to new avengers and then you have passing parameters to initiate a new object of avenger now let's talk about dynamic language a dynamic type language cannot catch errors until a particular branch of execution runs so a bug can persist for a long time until the program runs into it many times it is enough to specify the types of the arguments and of the return value of a function the compiler can then infer type for all the variables defined in the body of the function scala code is usually much more concise and readable than the equivalent java code without compromising any of the type safety some of the benefits of scala being statically typed language are like it has verifiable properties we can refactor our code whenever we want without compiler being uh, angry with us so next is uh, scala is a multi paradigm language just because scala has the best of both worlds object oriented and functional it's a very powerful language it's one of the very few languages that can support both paradigms and still works effortlessly beautiful it has capabilities such as strong encapsulation and abstraction then we have the concepts of classes objects and traits and mixins and then it supports functional constructs as well has a lot many powerful tools to offer like referential transparency immutability anonymous functions procedures high order functions currying etc and that is the reason we have a very powerful language that can be used in many ways libraries for writing app so next is easier parallelism scala provides us mechanisms to take advantage of parallel architectures for example parallel collections are active constructs which uh, talk in terms of application state and communicate by passing messages see i want to make a point that favors us the developers that we use uh, these constructs like actors or parallel collections immutable data structures that interacts parallelly we limit the reasons possible when uh, something goes wrong if an actor misbehaves we know the problem lies in either the code of for this actor or one of the messages that the actor base receives other reasons to choose scala are like it's a uh, rich features like configurability maintainability computation on demand concurrency constructs such as actors etc etc these make scala desirable and uh, you'll definitely want to try it out this in your very next project don't you so let's summarize what we have learned in this lecture we started with the reasons that make scala cool language reasons to choose scala for its feature rich constructs and multi paradigm functionalities very few languages are there with such power and robustness scala is one of them and that's the reason it, for its popularity we discussed all those reasons such as compatibility being high level statically typed and etc in our lecture so that's it for today in our next video lecture we will talk about uh, scala's features and then we'll take a look at frameworks written in scala so i would want to wish you happy learning thank you bye bye